Welcome to another interview presented by Alabama Wrestling Forums. I'm Jackson Bast here with 7A, 2021, 182-pound champ, Warren Hoyt. How are you doing today, Warren? Doing good. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. So let me start out by asking you, what got you into wrestling? Uh, well, so uh, my dad, my dad wrestled in high school at Pinson Valley uh, back when they were like a dynasty. Uh, and then he wasn't very serious into it. And then my brother, he started wrestling real young. He, like, came home with a flyer from school in, like, fifth grade. And uh, so he started wrestling, and, you know, I just followed suit. So Awesome to hear. So you mentioned your brothers. What was it like having, you know, you had um, Gunny and Kellen both wrestling in high school. How was that like having an older sibling wrestling for your career? Uh, I definitely, like, uh, Gunny kind of, like, paved the way for uh, – for Killian and I, um, I think it, you know, it made me kind of realize, like, look at at the future at a very young age, and and really commit to the sport and realize where I wanted to go in it. Because um, you know, I've known that I wanted to wrestle in college since I was in fifth, sixth grade, and that's because you know I watched my brother do it, and so you know, I was you know high expectations and always because of them, you know, big shoes to fill. Uh, yeah, but and so just made me made me like look at at what I wanted to do early. Yeah, definitely. So you started at uh, Alabama Takedown Academy with uh, Coach JP. Yeah. Talk, talk to us about how JP kind of gave you the foundation for your wrestling. Uh, well, so I actually I started wrestling uh, with Tiger Youth Wrestling. Uh, and that's where I, you know, learned a drop step and, and my stance and stuff. And so that was my dad uh, who coached me there. So, uh, my, yeah, my dad really gave me those, those good basics at a young age. And then I started wrestling with JP, uh, you know, third or fourth grade. And he really took, you know, kind of a, kind of a special interest in me just because of our family families were close and my brothers. Um, so that, yeah, JP, he really, you know, he invested a lot of time into me and he really made me the wrestler that I am. So, yeah. Definitely. And I, I know that you wrestled at a lot of like off season stuff. Uh-huh. Kind of key on the importance of what it's like to go to Fargo or Virginia Beach and how important it is to even go. Um, I so yeah, I started wrestling freestyle and Greco in fifth or sixth grade, and I really, I mean, I turned the corner. I really took off when I started doing that. Um, it forces you to just you know stay disciplined year round, um, you know stay focused because I think that's when we when I make my my leaps and bounds are are in the summer, not really during you know my high school season. Um, you know I think uh, just keep keeping you focused and also you know it teaches you so many you know wrestling freestyle and Greco teaches you so many different, especially Greco just different ways to attack that you can you know translate into folk style. So you wrestled at Grissom High School with Coach Desaro during the beginning of your career. Mm-hmm. Talk to us a little bit about how he how what he had a lot of old thoughts when it comes to wrestling. Yeah, been there for a while. Kind of explain his kind of keys to being a successful wrestler. Uh, he his big thing was uh, you know we may not be the best out there, but we're going to be the toughest mentally. Uh, you know, those, those great Grissom teams, they were always just, you know, tough as dirt. Um, so that was, you know, he, he ran us a lot, you know, hard practice every day. Uh, so he was, you know, there was not a big focus of, you know, he, if we needed, you know, the technical side of things, he would probably bring somebody else in. Um, but yeah, his whole philosophy was being, was being mentally tougher than our opponents. What are some things he did to make you guys mentally tough? <laughs> uh lots of conditioning yeah <laughs> lots of conditioning i bet keeping us disciplined keeping us disciplined so you know what was the biggest struggle you had when you when you lost coach Desaro going into your was that your junior or your senior year going into my junior year uh well so my coach that came in he was uh you know coach bradford he'd been around the program for a long time he wrestled for grissom he wrestled with my brothers uh, so there was not – the transition period probably wasn't – you know, it was it was pretty nice, all things considering. Um, I was really excited about him coming in. Uh, and, you know, him and, him and I's philosophy and style really lined up really well. So I was actually, you know, pretty excited about it. Uh, the only, like, there were some growing pains, uh, you know, with guys kind of 
Um, there were some growing pains with guys who who came into the program to wrestle for Grissom, kind of you know dropping out when when Desaro left. Um, so that was you know a big deal. We were hurting for numbers that that first year, but no, it was a great transition period. Yeah. Awesome. So you know, sadly, your junior year, you ended up coming falling a little short. Mm-hmm. So how did losing in the state finals your junior year kind of drive you to be so dominant your senior year? Uh, well, I spent the first couple of weeks pretty mopey about it. Uh, you know, I didn't want to go to practice. I didn't really want to do anything. I got pretty upset about it for a while there. Um, but then, you know, after I got past that, you know, I, all I was thinking about, you know, for the whole year was, you know, that, that, that finals match next year. Um, and, you know, I, uh, I think I realized the level that I had to be at to get to reach my goals and that I wasn't there yet. So I really had to kind of turn a corner mentally, um, you know, because, uh, yeah, mentally was the big thing. You know, I had to go out there and, and be attacking because I hung back in that finals match. So. Completely understand. And so I talk about your dominant run, especially at the state tournament. You you pinned your guy in the finals. What are you telling yourself going against or turning state finalist and JT Foster from Hoover? What are you telling yourself getting prepped for that match? that was different than your junior year? Um, I went into that match. My junior year, I didn't go in with a game plan. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd beat Willoughby before, um, you know, so I went in. I was like, all right, we're just going to do what we do. Um, and then, you know, my, my senior year, though, uh, I really went in. I knew exactly what I was going to get to, um, you know, right off the bat. Uh, I went in, you know, very confident. Uh, well, not very confident. I went in expecting a dogfight, probably like a one-two win, but, you know, really confident that I was going to be able to get it done. Um, you know, the nerves kind of washed. I was, the nerves were there all weekend until I was like warming up for it. Um, and I knew warming up. I was like, I, I got this. So. That's awesome. So, you know, you, you won your first state title your senior year. What was that like? Uh, <laughs> it was really gratifying. Uh, just, Seeing the, you know, because I had a pretty crazy workout routine the the months leading up to it. So just for for all the all the sacrifice and all the work to finally finally pay off, it made, you know, made me realize like, that it's all worth it. So, awesome. so you know, there's there's a reason I didn't bring it up, but congratulations on committing to Little Rock. That's Appreciate it. Division one. Uh huh. How well? You know, the division one is in a dead period right now. What were some of the struggles you had getting recruited by a Division One college? Um, there was not with Little Rock. It was uh, you know, it was pretty straightforward. Um, I had a lot of schools that just uh, <laughs> would never return my calls, uh, like UNC. I really you know wanted was trying to get on their radar really hard for for a while there. Uh, wrote them a bunch of emails, uh, called them a couple times. Uh, you know, so so I think initially getting in touch, you know, you can't when you don't have those camps and those big tournaments to really, you know, go out there and see them getting in, getting that initial contact is probably, is probably the hardest part for me. So, you know, after, after everything that you, you've gone through and still making it division one, do you have any advice for someone who wants to wrestle division one for, because, you know, Alabama is not known as a wrestling state. We both know that we know that we're not, you know, a Pennsylvania or New Jersey where the state tournament Winning it would get you recruited. Mm-hmm. What What do they have to do to go to wrestle Division One? Uh, you got to go out to those big tournaments. You got to go to Virginia Beach. You got to go to Fargo. Um, you know, I mean, those are always great. But even those small off season tournaments, you know, you got to go out there and wrestle those Georgia guys and those Pennsylvania guys and and everybody who's good. You know, definitely. So I have a segment on my little interview thing where I ask the hot button topics that are going on in Alabama. Mm-hmm. So the first one I'm going to ask is, should Alabama be one division or multiple divisions? And if multiple divisions, how should you split it up? Uh, yeah, I was just talking with a buddy about this the other day. Uh, what I've settled on is I, uh, I'd be in support if we combined, you know, five through seven A and did two divisions, just a small school and a big school. For a while there, I was in support of the one division, but seeing, seeing the 4A tournament this year, uh, those small schools, I think, you know, they need to grow that program, um, you know, bring that up a little bit before we go to that one division. 
but I think a, a five through seven A state tournament would be a lot of fun. I think we'd have, you know, most, if not all the studs in the state, you know, wrestling that tournament, going against each other, finding out who's, who's the best. For an athlete in the current climate that as a, you know, I've asked coaches this question, but they're not, you know, they're not athletes. Are you in support of being able to go to club in season? 100% I'm in support of that. So what would you say to somebody who would argue by saying, let's say Beauregard High School, they don't have a club out there. So they don't think it's fair that those people get to go to club during season because they don't have those tools. What would you argue Uh, with that? You know, I think, uh, you know, the the more we grow wrestling, the less that's going to be a problem. And I think, uh, you know, going to go into those clubs is what's going to help us grow, you know, getting, getting guys better, you know, when, when this, when, you know, the guys who are good, they're going to help grow the sport in the state. You know, so the, the more we do that, the more clubs are going to start popping up. So I think that, you know, it's, you know, it would be crappy for sure for a little while. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate that I was never in a position like that. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I think, you know, it's something we got to do to grow the sport to, to fix those problems. Definitely. And this year we saw the first girls state tournament. Mm-hmm. How do you think the state should go upon growing it if you know if you agree with what they're doing, obviously you would agree with what they're doing now. But is there anything else you'd say to further the expansion of girls wrestling in the state? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't. I think the the AHSA was a couple sh- votes short of uh, you know adding girls wrestling officially. Um, but yeah, I think they should have their own division. We should really you know you know put our put some chips into that grow that in Alabama. Um, I think you know the more people wrestling is going to be better for wrestling that's what i'm about is growing wrestling uh as far as what we do to really to really grow that uh <laughs> i don't really know um you know i sure we could look at some of the things you know george has done because they got a pretty good program going on over there so yeah definitely so what made you pick little rock um so i got i got coach Harrison's number from a, a buddy that i was wrestling on a duels team with um and so I think, and you know, the recruitment process, I knew, you know, pretty right away. It, it was a while after that, that I committed, but I knew pretty right away that I was, that's where I wanted to be. Um, I've had, you know, D1 goals for a while now. Uh, and so they were both the best wrestling opportunity and the best, you know, financial opportunity for me. Uh, my brother also just took a job in Little Rock, so he'll be there. But, uh, you know, really, I just believe that, uh, you know, the, the coaching staff there is going to, be able to help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. So you talk about Coach Erickson and oh, I cannot think of Erisman. Erisman and what's the what's the assistant coach? Uh, coach Javi. Javi. Okay, I can remember his first name. I can remember his last name. What are those? What are those coaches bringing to the table for you specifically that make you want to go there? Uh, I think their attitude mostly. Um, you know, they're really. I mean, they're, they're great dudes. They're just, you know, great people. Uh, you know, they've, they've been at wrestling on the biggest stage, so they, they know what it takes, you know. Uh, so that's their attitude really to just come in there and, and start something new and grow it, I think is awesome. And I, I know sadly because of the dead period, you didn't go on a visit, so you didn't get to see the facility in person. But I know you've seen videos of that facility. That is a nice facility. It, very nice facility, yeah. I saw the pictures of it. He's like, oh, we got this room that's a study room that's got like three flat screen TVs and a mini fridge for everybody except for the heavyweights. And I'm just picking. But, uh, well, uh, so is there anything you want to say to my viewers before we go? Uh, I guess uh, go, go Trojans. That's all. Huh. Awesome. So thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I love doing this. Uh, you know, you're you're helping me grow the sport as much as I am. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. What a great interview with Warren Hoyt. Hey guys, Jackson here. I want to take a second, thank all of you guys for all your support, and to let you guys know that every single week and at least till June, we'll have an interview coming out. And I will soon be starting to do more interviews on Wednesdays. And we're going to feature Athlete Wednesdays every Wednesday in the coming months. Thank you guys so much for everything you guys do. 
to make this possible for me.